Now we're going to look at some methods for understanding, some workable methods. What do I mean by workable? Practical, that they actually give the result that we're looking for. Outlining, handwriting, diagramming, clay modeling, mind mapping, and building an ontology. Why are these workable methods and maybe some other things like just reading aren't? You want to get away from the pure significance, the pure information of the terms, and you want to start bringing that significance into manifestation. This is the process of becoming. So the best way to do that is to take that original material, once you've made a copy of it in your own mind, then without looking at the source materials, to begin to manifest that by writing. And I mean handwriting. Writing with your own hand is very powerful. It's extremely uh, potent, especially when dealing with abstract subjects like math. Don't use a computer for math. Don't use uh, Mathematica or whatever it is. Much better to write it by hand. Then do it on a computer than to me. Why is that? Because you begin to engage the senses of the physical body in the process of obtaining the knowledge, obtaining the skills. You begin to bring the thing into manifestation. It's not just name and form anymore. Now it's senses. Uh, remember, six senses is one of the stages and the processes of the origination. So when you bring a subject from a name and form into the senses, you begin to make it yours. You begin to change your being physically. You begin to wire those connections into your neurons, into your brain, into your very muscles and bones. And this is why uh, physical training is so much important in skills like music and other things that are performance type of skills. But even for strictly knowledge-based skills like math, for example, the writing out of the formulas, the writing out of the philosophy, if you're studying philosophy, diagramming the thing, or clay modeling it, will give you a much, much better comprehension, much, much deeper understanding, and actually train you to uh, use the thing, uh, to become an expert at it in a practical way. Outlining for understanding. The first workable method for building understanding is outlining, making an ordered, prioritized list of points. The dictionary defines outlining as making a general description or plan, giving the essential features of something, but not the detail. Any word processing software can be used to generate an outline, but we suggest that you write it by hand. Handwriting engages additional senses, including the kinesthetic sense, in the process of understanding. It also helps you to identify points that need more work. You were probably taught to outline in Harvard style, but it doesn't have to be that way. Here's an outline for the novel Catch-22 by Joseph Heller, and you see it in spreadsheet form. This novel is densely plotted. Complex, complex, lots, lots of, characters, of characters, lots, lots of actions. actions. So, so he, he puts, puts it in the form of a spreadsheet. spreadsheet. You, you notice all the uh, cells that are erased. <laughs> it's <laughs> in pencil, and I recommend using pencil, pencil too. too. Speaking, Speaking of creative, creative outline formats, formats here's, here's Henry, Henry Miller's manuscript plan for the Tropic of Capricorn. Capricorn. As, As you, you can, can see, doesn't, doesn't look, look anything, anything like, like a traditional, traditional outline. And, and yours, yours doesn't, doesn't have to either. either. You, you can, can put, put charts in there, you can, you can put, put drawings, anything, anything that, that makes sense to you to make sense, sense of the subject that, that you're, you're trying, trying to wrap, to wrap your, your mind around. around. Here's, Here's an, an outline from, from J.K. Rowling for one of her Harry Potter books. books. I don't know which one. one. And, and as you can see, this one's done in ink. But it's the same type of chart layout that Joseph Heller used for his books. Uh, this works for a lot of different subjects besides novels, though. 
You, you can, can try, try it on, on anything, anything that's, that's analytical, analytical that has, has a lot of categories. categories. It'll, It'll work, work great. great. Now, now here's, here's an interesting, interesting one. one. This, this is Jay Talese's outline for his profile on Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. It's, it's done, done in Magic, magic Marker. marker. All, All kinds of different, different colors, colors, sketches, sketches weird, weird shapes and arrows. arrows. It's, it's like, like whatever, whatever works for you, you to get, get your idea out of your head and onto paper, paper manually. Don't, don't use computer, computer programs, programs right. right. Now, now let's, let's talk, talk a little bit about clay modeling. modeling. A, very a very useful, useful and workable method, method for building understanding is clay modeling. modeling. Most, Most people, people have never encountered it, so, so give it a try. try. You, you might think, think it's silly, silly. only kids, kids do that, that. But, but it is very powerful. powerful. It, it works, works on the principle of exchanging significance for mass, mass getting the concept out of your head and allowing you to physically manipulate and play with it. You don't, you don't have, have to use clay. clay. Wooden, Wooden blocks, blocks, nuts, nuts and, and bolts, or any odds and ends will do, as long as you label them properly. properly. Now, now, here's, here's a, short a short demo of clay modeling. modeling. We're, We're going to use ordinary, ordinary modeling clay, clay that you can buy in any toy store or stationery store very cheaply to demonstrate the process of planetary transits in astronomy. OK, so what is a planetary transit? Here we have the sun and the Earth. You can tell it's the Earth, because it has a label. And then you have the moon going around the Earth. OK? So every so often, the moon comes around in between the Earth and the sun. That just happened a couple of weeks ago. When we made this video, we had an eclipse of the sun. So when the moon moves across the face of the sun from the Earth's point of view, that's called a transit. Sometimes Venus also does the same thing. Let's make the scale a little bigger here. Sometimes Venus goes between the Earth and the sun in such a way that it crosses the sun's disk, and that's called a transit of Venus. Now, a transit is also a conjunction. In other words, a conjunction means that the planet and the sun, Venus and the sun, are in the same direction. It happens with the moon, too. When the moon is in the same direction as the sun, you have a conjunction between them. What's the difference between a conjunction and a transit? A conjunction doesn't necessarily mean that the moon moves in front of the sun and covers it, or that Venus moves in front of the sun and covers it. Right. A conjunction means that they're simply in the same direction. Now, what about the outer planet? Let's put Mars here. Now, do we ever have a transit of Mars? Well, yes, if there's any planets out beyond Mars, and Mars happens to move across the face of the planet, like Jupiter, let's say, that would be a conjunction, I mean, a, sorry, a transit of Jupiter by Mars. So this can happen both towards the sun and away from the sun. This is just a very simple demonstration to give you an idea of what a clay demo is all about and how using a clay demo can actually make the idea the concept come alive. Because we can we can sit here and line these things up the way they would actually look like here's the Earth and here's the moon going around and the moon actually goes in front of the sun and that's a conjunction I'm oh, sorry a transit or Venus actually going in front of the sun this happened just a few months ago 
So in that way we can model these things, get the ideas out of our head and into physical space where we can move them around and model the phenomena that we're studying. It works with anything. Now let's quickly go over mind mapping. Mind mapping is another workable method for building understanding. Here is where software becomes very useful. You are building a network of concepts and terms and showing the hierarchical connections and relationships between and among them. Mind mapping is similar to outlining, but more freeform. What you're really doing here is building a taxonomy, a network of terms expressing the elements of your subject and beginning to map the relationships between and among them. Mind mapping the important terms and concepts of your subject is a preliminary step toward ontological analysis, which we will cover in depth in the next video. Here are some good software tools for mind mapping. Take a look at XMind, MindNode, The Brain, pricey but very powerful, FreeMind, and look up on Wikipedia or the list of concept and mind mapping software, complete with links to the software developers.